Hello, Dr. Fixmaster here. Um, I've got a little problem I'm going to share with you. I don't have a car to show you because my 2008 Honda Civic EX is in the shop right now getting a new engine installed. Listen carefully if you don't want to end up having to replace the engine in your Honda Civic. There is a series of cascading failures that can occur in your Honda Civic if you have an 8th generation, possibly others, possibly other models of cars uh, made by Honda as well. Uh, let me go through the, the series of failures. First thing that happens, you blow a head gasket. Honda Civics have an engine that has an aluminum cylinder head. Sits on top of the steel or iron engine block. It has a different temperature expansion coefficient than the one underneath it. So Hondas are kind of notorious for blowing head gaskets, which is the, the gasket material that's in between the cylinder head and the engine block. If that gasket blows, uh, there's, there's passages for the, for the coolant in the engine to circulate so that it can go into the radiator and you dissipate heat uh, to keep you from melting out and destroying the engine. <clears throat> well, when the head gasket blows, there is a pathway created between the engine oil and the, um, and the coolant that circulates through the block. That's the first thing that happens. How that showed up with me was uh, the temperature light maxed out. So I, I, I have a temperature gauge on the dash. It went up to maximum, and I thought, whoa, I got a temperature problem here. I've seen that be a thermostat in the past, so I replaced the thermostat. Um, topped off the coolant, no problem with the temperature gauge, it went back to normal. So I thought, I'm good to go. Well, a week later, same thing happened. Temperature gauge goes up, and, and I thought, okay, maybe I didn't put enough coolant in the car. So I topped off the coolant again, fixed the problem. It was gone. I thought, okay, well, sometimes you get air in the, in the hoses, it takes a couple of tries of topping off the coolant before it, you know, is happy again after you get air in there. <coughs> That's what I thought it was. It was not. A month goes by, and my son is driving the car, pulls into the driveway and says, Dad, the oil pressure light just came on, and the, the uh, check engine light, or, yeah, the check engine light came on as well. So I... I told him, uh, let's go look at it. So we went out. First thing I did was I, I, you know, it was engine oil. So I checked the oil. There's no oil in the car. I had put a brand new batch of oil in the car not six weeks prior. So under, under normal circumstances, that level stays pretty close uh, to the same level. As an engine gets old, you might, you might lose a quart after months uh, of operating it. Uh, in this case, the entire, you know, because the, the, the rings in the pistons get thin, you start consuming or burning a little bit of oil in an old engine. Uh, in a new engine, you shouldn't see that hardly at all. Uh, so, no oil in the car. And the engine light, uh, the, the check engine light goes on, the oil pressure light goes on. By the time that happens, in this series of events, it's already too late. Uh, I went in, the, the mechanic said, Your, the bearings are all shot, it's all, it was, I pulled the dipstick out, it was black, there was nothing, it, it was just cooked. Uh, so I am replacing an engine now, um, when I really shouldn't have had to. So uh, what, what we need to do here is, t I, I want to tell you how to avoid that from happening to you. Because the first indication that you're going to get could be an oil temperature light or an oil pressure light that comes on and, and it's already too late. So it's, it, in, in these circumstances, that light helps you this much, zero. Um, because, you know, you, usually the, 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 if you have a, a, an oil pump inside your engine fail, uh, it, the, the oil pressure light will sense that and let you know. And, uh, and when you see that light, you should immediately pull over, drive the car for zero number of seconds after it. You're done. As soon as that light comes on, even the check engine light, just don't drive it when that's on. Um, 
so and that's that's one circumstance where the oil pressure light would work. What happens when coolant gets in the engine is it mixes with the oil and it gets whipped up in the crankshaft and and uh, turns into a milkshake looking stuff. So when you pull that dipstick out and you're checking the oil, if you see a kind of a chocolate milkshake like fluid, that means you've blown a head gasket and you immediately need to have it serviced. <laughs> Do that before you run the car out of oil, you know, because your oil can then go into your radiator, into your coolant pipes, and it'll, it'll, it happens quickly. So you just got to be aware of it. And when that milky, chocolatey, thick stuff um, gets in the workings of your oil pressure monitor, it doesn't tell you until it's too late. Under normal circumstances, it might tell you when, when the level's getting a little low and it's starting to lose pressure. In this case, it's already too late when that light goes off. So uh, the moral of the story is if you don't want to end up replacing the engine in your car, it, it's a too late light. It's not an oil pressure light. It's an it's already too late warning, and, and it's useless in that set of circumstances. Knowing that these head, head gaskets are... Uh, <clears throat> at fault quite often and that they go pay attention if you own a, a Honda to that particular uh, phenomenon and anytime you see any kind of a temperature issue even if you're just topping off the the coolant immediately check the engine oil check the oil check the oil check the oil that's the only way you're going to be able to get around this and not end up in the same very expensive boat that I'm now having to deal with Thank you for your time, thanks for watching, and happy fixing.